Good afternoon, my Real News Media TV family. Welcome back to the channel for another news update for November 12, 2023. And in the news this afternoon, three shot two fatally in Gregory Park. Two men were gone down and another injured in Gregory Park, St. Catherine, on Saturday night. The deceased have been identified as Cedric Crooks, 46, also known as Gungo, and 47-year-old Michael Manley, also known as Bada Bada, both of Gregory Park addresses. Reports are that three men were at a bar in the area when they were pounced upon by a lone gunman who opened fire at them. Crooks and Manley reportedly both received a gunshot to the head. The other man was shot in the chest. The suspect escaped in the area on foot. The police were summoned and the men were taken to the hospital, where Crooks and Manley were pronounced dead. The other man was admitted in serious but stable condition. The police have not yet released a motive for the killing. Senior Superintendent Christopher Phillips says the lawmen have maintained a strong presence in the area and are disappointed that this incident has occurred. We will not allow criminals to disrupt the peace for the rest of the year, especially those that are looking forward to a peaceful Christmas, he told the news. Uh, me the right there. When me walk down on my real place, I use my Wi-Fi when me hear a big gunshot. I man say, Indian, you know, you walk down. I say, yeah, man, me hear but I wait there. When I come back, I say, so I come see three men get shot up. Two men dead and one gone to the hospital. One young boom, one young brother. One of just come over my workplace, come call the king preacher. You don't think what I thought I did. You don't think what I thought I did. She never said that, you don't know what I'm going Place loose. Too loose. Place too lego. Place need to be arranged up. Yeah, fence up. Yeah. See the program? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Trial this week for a lawsuit over alleged illegal traffic tickets. A lawsuit that could result in taxpayers repaying hundreds of millions of dollars for alleged illegal traffic tickets issued over a 15 year Maurice Hausen, who is a software engineer, sued the state in 2021 for alleged breaches of his constitutional rights over a $5,000 ticket issued it to him by the police on July 5 that year for a speeding violation. He is contending that the ticket was illegal because of legislative missteps in the process used to increase the fines for traffic offenses. The trial will be heard by a panel of three judges comprising Justices Dale Palmer, Carl Barnaby and Tara Carr. The matter is scheduled to start at 10 a.m. Hausen contends that at the time the ticket was issued, Fines or fixed penalties for traffic offenses under the 1938 Road Traffic Act were not increased by the legislature or the Minister of Transport as mandated in Section 116 of the RTA. Instead, the fines were purportedly increased by then Finance Minister Dr. Omar Davis in 2006 and 2007 as if they were taxes or duties under the Provisional Collection of Taxes Act, he asserted. The Minister of Finance has no power or authority to increase the fines or fix penalties under the Road Traffic Act, the software engineer argued through his attorneys Gavin Goff, Jamar Clark and Matthew Royal from the law firms Myers Fletcher and Gordon. Hausen's lawsuit seeks, among other things, an order for the government to refund the motorists who he contends were illegally fined over the 15-year period ending in 2021 and the declaration that his constitutional rights to due process were breached by the imposition of the illegal penalties. The government used the marathon November 2021 meeting of the legislature to pass a bill correcting the misstep days after the Supreme Court granted Hausen an injunction blocking the police from issuing tickets that imposed fines above the 2006 rates. Government has also conceded that it will have to return a substantial portion of traffic ticket fines that were collected over the 15-year period. Such persons are only entitled to the difference between the amount prescribed in the then act and the amount stated on the ticket, read a section of a court filing by attorneys for the government. The case has morphed into a class action suit after the presiding judge granted permission for Hausen to be the representative of motorists 
who were issued the traffic tickets over the 15-year period and paid fines that exceeded the rates that were in place before the purported 2006 measures. Legal experts say it would be a big payday for citizens who were ticketed between 2006 and 2021 should the court rule that the software engineer's constitutional rights were breached, coupled with a concession from the government. Jamaica seeks FBI's help to call a perpetrator behind a bomb threat comes to detain one person. One person has been taken into custody after dozens of bomb threats to more than 70 institutions, mainly schools between Thursday and Friday, caused the chaos and heightened fears and anxiety across the island. The police have determined that none was credible. Deputy Commissioner of Police Fitzbailey told the news on Friday that the United States Federal Bureau of Investigation has been asked to assist with investigations, but said that the threats so far have amounted to nothing but a hoax. At least 14 threats were made on Thursday, Bailey confirmed, warning that the police would ensure that every penalty applicable would be brought against the perpetrator. Late Saturday evening, Bailey revealed that a person whose identity was not disclosed has been taken into custody in relation to the threats made on Friday as the multi-agency investigations being aided by international law enforcement partners intensified. We are convinced that it's a hoax. Somebody just trying to be mischievous. The police are on top of it. We are doing our investigations, and whoever is responsible will ultimately be brought to justice, Bailey asserted. We are in touch with the FBI, soliciting their support in certain aspects of the investigation, he added. On Friday, Jamaica Teachers Association President Leighton Johnson said the threats have revealed the vulnerability of schools which he said are without a bomb or mass shooting protocol. A hospital and a court building were among the institutions targeted on Friday. All other institutions were educational. This has produced a heightened level of anxiety within our schools, said Johnson. The JTA president said that the safety and the security unit within the Ministry of Education must now draft the protocols on how to respond to bomb and similar security threats, pointing to other jurisdictions including the United States and the parts of Europe where he said they exist. Teachers and the students indicated that situations were chaotic simply because the persons were not aware of how to operate. Criminals have stepped up their game, whether hoax or not, whether it is in an attempt to cause chaos, distract and disrupt the system for a couple of days. Whatever the situation is, everybody needs to know how to act going forward. The time is now, Johnson urged. Farmer allegedly robs other farmer of cash and illegal gun. Six months after a farmer was reportedly robbed of his licensed firearm and $70,000 in cash when he went to Hopeton in St. Elizabeth to purchase a cow, the police have charged another farmer for his alleged role in the robbery. Malcolm Lynch, otherwise called Rick, a 26-year-old farmer of Warminster, St. Elizabeth, is charged with a robbery with aggravation and the possession of a prohibited weapon. The police are currently searching for an accomplice. Reports are that on May 2, 2023, a farmer went to Hopeton to purchase a cow and was allegedly pounced upon and held up by Lynch and another man. The two assailants proceeded to rob the no complainant of his licensed firearm, $70,000 in cash, and his wallet containing bank cards before fleeing the scene. A report was made to the police and a probe launched into the development. After months of long probing, the police apprehended Lynch. He was subsequently positively identified by the complainant on an identification parade and was booked for the offenses last week. Lynch is expected to appear in the St. Elizabeth Parish Court early this week. <laughs>